So now it's time for Glenn Brown's run up this mountain, 156 turns. There you see his qualification time, 6 minutes, 59.1 seconds. That was one day earlier. He breaks the light beam here, and now he's on the course officially for his run up Pikes Peak. Yes, they don't get to see the second half of this course, but one time earlier in the week, so it's been a long time since he's seen the upper portion of this course. As we go on board high atop this T2000 truck, and you can see from the body roll as he goes around these corners, the suspension is extremely important when you're going on a course like this. 23,000 pounds of diesel truck, and you'll notice the spectators along the side of the road, they do show it a bit of respect. And you can see coming off of that corner, when he gets on the throttle, that thing really jumps. Even though it's very heavy, it has a lot of horsepower, and can pull him through those corners extremely well. The first very tight 180 degree corner, it's called Engineer's Corner, and the big CFI Red Racer made it easily. You can feel the acceleration right there as he got on the throttle. See how it jumps forward. A lot of horsepower, a lot of weight, but this truck really handles well through this part of the course. The picnic grounds, we've got a speed trap there. 79 miles an hour, and don't look at the scenery, Glenn, or you go straight off the edge. And you can see the people watching are giving it a lot of respect as well as they step back when it goes by. Look at the way he is leaning and tossing the back end of this tandem axle diesel rig around these corners. He's throwing it around. And if you've ever driven up this mountain in a passenger car, you know that it's quite a thrill. I can't imagine, as most people can't, what a thrill it must be to be in this huge truck sliding sideways around these very, very tight corners. Now, let's go to Marty Reed, and he can tell us more about this big red racer. One of the biggest crowd reactions last year at the hill climb was provided by Glenn Brown and this CFI huge Kenworth, the T2000. But there's been changes from last year's version, and most of it's right back here, and it's real easy to see. If you remember last year's truck, stacks came out the side like a traditional. Well, they put more turbo power in here, but that generated more heat, so they had to come up with a new configuration. And then they also had to come up with a design to get more air to the radiator system. And this is what they came up with, huge air scoops on both sides of this big, huge T2000 rig. This is a joint effort involving Kenworth, Shell, Cummins, Michelin, and CFI, among others. And Glenn Brown wonders why other companies and manufacturers are not involved. They're learning from this project. I mean, we learn about the tractor, we learn about the engines, and they've got uh, technical people here in support of the project. They've got computers hooked up on it constantly. They're checking things out, as does Michelin Tire. And, and I'm just wondering where Freightliner and and Volvo and Mac and all the others, uh, where you at? I mean, come on, let's help uh, uh, try to promote safety in trucks and learn about the trucks and make them better vehicles for our drivers that move the freight in this country. And it's the only venue of its kind where you guys could compete head to head. I'll tell you what, if you build a truck that'll climb this mountain, you've got a truck. You certainly do. And this truck is on display most of the year, and it's a great source of pride for the employees of CFI. They are now heading towards Glen Cove. This is a portion of the course that Glen Brown had a little trouble last year, but so far he's had no trouble at all. It's also the halfway point on this 12 and a half mile jaunt up Pikes Peak, 156 total turns. Listen to the crowd. They see that big red racer coming around the corner. His split time, six minutes, 54.91 seconds. And this is the corner right here where Glenn got it sideways this year much smoother. Very good job this time around. And as this truck goes up, you can hear the crowd on every corner. But he does get a little squirrely right there. But the crowd in every corner really loves the cheers for this truck. Look at that view. We are at the top of the W's, looking way down, lower on the course. And that little speck that's getting bigger on the screen is that big Kenworth T2000. Now, we mentioned last year and what happened at Glen Cove. Let's take you back so you can get an idea just how close this really was. This has to be the most exciting moment of all of last year's racing as Glenn Brown smoked the tires, got that thing clear sideways, almost blocked the course, got back on the throttle, and never missed a heartbeat, except for mine. Yeah, and one of his, too. Back on board in 1998, Glenn is making his way. Notice the trees are gone. We're now in the Alpine section of the race course. And look off to your left. If you don't make this corner, bye-bye.
It's a long way down. And there was actually concern before they ever ran this truck up this mountain that it could actually make it around some of these very sharp corners. They tried it, they made it, and now they're racing it. Listen to the crowd in the background. And this is another one of those treacherous corners because you've got a 180 degree left-hander coming up here. You gotta get to this point, get on the brakes. Look at the wheels chattering as he hogs it down. 23,000 pounds under braking. Yes, and you can see he helps himself around that corner by actually sliding the back end out and making that truck do what it has to do. It has to handle well to corner that way. Remember, we're also getting higher in altitude, so those two Cummins N14 engines that crank out 3,000 horsepower, well, they're going to start bleeding off some of that horsepower because of a lack of oxygen. Now, how big of a star has Glenn Brown become over the last two years here at Pikes Peak? Well, take a look at three of his closest friends. It's Parnelli Jones, Roger Mears, and Bobby Unser in that photograph, and the three of them were here at Pikes Peak to partake in a celebrity challenge sponsored by Toyota. Now, their times were not that much quicker than Glenn's time through Glen Cove. That's Bobby Unser with son Robbie. Between them all, they've probably got about uh, oh, 20 or so championships here on the mountain. And that's Bobby Unser, and I think it's 22 to be exact. As he heads up to Glen Cove. They're only going halfway in the celebrity race. And you can tell by the way they're getting around this corner that Glenn Brown's doing a terrific job in his truck. It looks faster in that truck than it does in these cars. That's Parnelli Jones making his way up the mountain. And here at Glen Cove was Roger Mears. And who won the celebrity division in the Toyota Celica Challenge? Well, we broke the news, and it was Roger Mears in a time of 5 minutes, 53.70 seconds. And that was only one minute quicker than the 23,000-pound truck driven by Glenn Brown. Oh, now, wait a minute. He's signing autographs. Is it, is it for the truck or is it for Glenn? Well, I think it was for Glenn. As he now reaches Devil's Playground, he's on that top portion of the course that is ever so treacherous, and it's so far to the bottom if you make a mistake. You want to know how far? This is bottomless pit that he is approaching. Off to his left side at the next corner, if you go over the edge, it's 6,000 feet straight down. That's right, 6,000 right at this moment. In fact, you could land into Manitou Springs, probably in somebody's living room. And you can see right there, he gives that thing a toss sideways, gets back on the throttle, makes a perfect corner. That's one of the most thrilling sights of this whole race to watch Glenn Brown do that. Now remember, he's at 12,500 feet and he has lost about 15% of his horsepower. Everybody who goes up this mountain faces that same problem. Cummins has done a great job keeping the horsepower in these turbo diesels, but it still loses no matter what you do. As you take a look off to the left, it's a long way to the bottom. It is frightening in a rental car driving up this mountain. You're on board with Glenn Brown as he is pushing this Kenworth T2000 as fast and as hard as he can. Now, this is Boulder Park, and you'll get an idea why it's called Boulder Park. Everywhere you look, you've got rocks. And look at the body angle and the way he handles these corners. Sitting that high in a truck, it's got to be a tremendous feeling. You've got to feel like you're leaning over the edge of this mountain on about half of these turns. Well, the 2,300 employees of CFI should be proud of their president and recently elected chairman of the board. What other top boss do you know would be willing to do this at this speed, at this danger level, lead by example, and not miss a turn? Well, he certainly does that. They've also been awarded the best appearing vehicle and crew two years running. Quite an accomplishment. Heading towards the finish line, the time on the left. Now remember, in 1916, it took 21 minutes for Ray Lenz to cross the finish line with 23,000 pounds of truck. Glenn Brown does it in 16 and a half. What an incredible experience for all of us to ride along with Glenn Brown and the CFI Red Racer. And you know what? Next year's just around the corner. Pikes Peak beckons every July 4th. And you can be guaranteed the CFI race team will return with a few new tricks up its sleeve. And Glenn Brown has set a new mark for the trucking industry. By racing his Kenworth T2000, Glenn has shown it's not just about hauling freight. And by conquering the mountain, Glenn Brown has shown that CFI is king of the hill. For Larry Rice, I'm Marty Reed. Thanks for watching.